Okay, welcome everybody to today's presentation on Learn the Signs, Act Early. My name is Kate Barlow. I am the Massachusetts Act Early Ambassador for the CDC. Today is um, part one, the first webinar of a series of five um, called the Interprofessional Education on the Promotion of Parental Monitoring of Developmental Milestones. So thank you so much all for coming. I also wanted to say thank you to the Massachusetts Act Early Steering Committee team. This was really a team effort uh, to get this grant and to really make these webinars happen. So I really wanted to say thank you. This webinar series is grant funded by the AUCD and the CDC. So just some housekeeping things. Please remain on mute throughout the recording. If you have questions, please put them into the chat box and um, Lauren Scott will be answering questions as we go. And at the end of the presentation, I will answer any unanswered questions. You can also email me any questions you may have. After today's webinar, you'll be receiving a post-survey email. When you complete the post-survey, you will be emailed a copy of today's presentation, as well as your certificate of attendance. If you attend all five webinars, you will also be able to receive 0.5 CEUs. So today's objectives is that we would like participants to be able to describe how to support family engagement through the use of the Learn the Science Act early developmental monitoring tools. We would also like for all of you to gain some knowledge on the different state agencies and how you can all use the tools and collaborate with each other. So why learn the signs act early? The CDC estimates that approximately one in six children ages three to 17 has a developmental disability. In children one to four, I'm sorry, in children birth to five, um, approximately one in four children are at a moderate or high risk for developmental, behavioral, or social delay. Parents of children with autism spectrum disorder are starting to note concerns around 18 months, yet children with autism spectrum disorder are still not being diagnosed until around age four. We really want to make sure that children are being identified and diagnosed as early as possible so that they receive the supports that they need. And which really hit home for me is that more than half of the children with delays are not receiving early intervention services. So that birth to three period, we're missing half of the children that need services. And so what can we really do to make sure that children are being identified as early as possible? Because we know that's what really matters for the best outcomes for children. So the mission of Learn the Signs Act Early is to really improve parent engagement and parental monitoring of developmental milestones. And hopefully through this engagement and identification of milestones, it'll increase the amount of children that are being screened for delays. So this is a really parent-friendly tool. It's friendly, it's positive, it's meant to really be a communication tool to engage parents. And what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna scare families. We don't wanna be like, oh, I, I think something might be wrong. Or, oh, I think your child might have autism. Research has shown us that this approach is not effective. Parents will get scared and oftentimes not consult their pediatrician. So instead, we really wanna engage them. We wanna build collaboration. We wanna celebrate the milestones with them and, and build rapport and be able to say, Oh my goodness, you know, Elizabeth is doing so well in class today. She is um, waving and pointing, um, but I haven't really heard her say any words. Is she talking at home? You know, really use this as more of a tool and engagement um, in order to start a conversation about the child's development. So this Learn the Signs Act Early program is really designed for everybody. And my job as the CDC's ambassador is to really spread the word to get everybody using it. How wonderful would it be if everybody that is involved in a child's life was using the same language, the same monitoring tool, and really having a good communication tool between the state agencies. So we want pediatricians offices and outpatient therapy and WIC and EI and YMCA and at-home daycare centers and the librarians. We want everyone who is involved in and working with children 
really using this tool. So thank you again for all of you coming because the more people that use Learn the Signs Acts Early in the state of Massachusetts, the better I look. So thank you again. Um, and, and that's really the goal. We want everyone to have a partnership together, this interagency collaboration to really improve the lives of children. So the next webinar is really dedicated to, to going over monitoring and screening and evaluation. But I just want to touch on this briefly because monitoring and screening are not interchangeable. These are two different uh, processes. And when we talk about developmental screening, um, this is what I'm an occupational therapist. That is my discipline. So by the time children come to me, they've already been identified. So I will do a developmental screen or an evaluation. So who does screening? Pediatricians do screening. Clinicians like myself do screenings. Trained teachers do screenings. And screenings are standardized assessment. Maybe you use the ASQ or the SWIC. These are tools that we look at you know, um, norms and is the child falling between the 25th and the 75 um, percentile. And as a result of this screening, we're going to say, please get screened again in a year or six months, depending on the age of the child. Or we're going to say, you know, what, let's inverse investigate further and we'd like for you to have an evaluation. So that's really the formal process of screening. What we're talking about today with Learn the Signs Act Early, this is a developmental monitoring tool, which is very different than screening. Developmental monitoring is an ongoing process that starts when you know, the child is born, and this specific tool goes up to five years of age. Anyone can do it. It's for teachers, it's for parents, it's for clinicians, it's for pediatricians, it's really for everyone. And so um, with Learn the Science Act Early, we're recognizing what developmental milestones are, understanding what comes next, what activities can we do to really facilitate those milestones from emerging? And you know, what, what can we do to help these children? So the research has shown that really adding monitoring with developmental screening is really the best approach to getting the most amount of children identified. So we're already doing a lot of screening and yet the CDC is saying we're still missing half of the children before age three that need the services. So hopefully with this increase of developmental monitoring, we'll really hope to reach all the children that need to be identified. So the ACT Early program has a ton of free tools, okay? We are gonna go over some of these tools. If you haven't already, please go ahead and download the Milestone Tracker app on your phone. We will be going over that in a minute, but we're gonna start by looking at some of the different tools. Again, all of them are free on the website. They all come in English and Spanish, and I'm gonna just be touching on a few of them today. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the Milestones uh, Movement Booklet. I love this little booklet. It's really handy. It has all of the checklists from two months to five years of age. It has activities you can try at home. Um, and what's really nice is that for each individual age group, so here I'm looking at four months, there's a purple box at the bottom. So the milestones have these checklists and it says, these are the cognitive things you, um, you can be looking for. These are the movement ones you can be looking for. Here are the language and communication milestones. Here are the social emotional milestones. Here are some activities you can do. And then in the purple box, it has act early if your child and it has specific things, missing milestones, doesn't watch things as they move, doesn't smile at people, can't hold head steady. So at four months, there are specific things that if the child can't do this, it says contact the doctor. So it's really straightforward and easy. And um, I really like these booklets. Keep in mind that this is for everyone, this tool. We don't all have to be experts on developmental milestones. Many of you throughout your disciplines, whatever your specific training is, you may not have had training in milestones. And that's okay, we don't have to all be experts because the CDC did the work for us. So even if you have no training in milestones, it says here, you know, you're working with your family, it says you need to contact the doctor because your child isn't doing that. They really wanna investigate further. It doesn't have to be on you. 
right? It's on the CDC. So this is really important sometimes when you're working with a new family and you might not have the uh, rapport that you would like to have to have that conversation. You can always put the ownership on the CDC. You know, you're not recommending it. The CDC is recommending that you talk to the pediatrician about the fact that, you know, the baby can't hold their head up yet. So um, this is a really uh, nice booklet that sort of has all the checklists in one spot. So if you're traveling from home to home, you can carry this booklet with you. Or if you're an outpatient clinician, you sort of have it at your desk and you can use it interchangeably. It's nice if it, you know a family has multiple children, you can talk about multiple children at once using one booklet. I did wanna say though that um, if a child falls in between two different checklists, so let's say um, in this booklet, there's a nine month checklist and there's a 12 month checklist. So if your child that you're working with is 10 months or 11 months, you would want to use the nine month checklist. So if you're if there isn't a checklist for the specific age of the child that you're working with, you're going to use the checklist at the earlier age. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about are the milestone checklists. And so these are these printable sheets that are online. Um, they come really nice if you have access to a color printer, um, but they don't have to be printed in color. Um, and again, for each age group, it will have what most babies do at this age. And I'm looking at the specific six month checklist right now. And it has a list of all the things that a six month old baby can do. And again, it has the purple box that says act early by talking to your child's doctor if your child, and then it has specific criteria, doesn't try to get things that are in reach, shows no affection for caregivers. Okay, so there's specific things. And then it says talk to your child's doctor. So it's really nice, um, sort of handy and all in one place. Um, when I print mine out, I do English on one side and I do Spanish on the back, which is really nice if you work in a diverse population. I work um, for Thelm Springfield, and so having Spanish on the other side is really nice for me. When you print these out from the website, though, it'll have the checklist on one side and it'll have the activities on the back. So when I print mine, I do mine special so that I have Spanish on the back. In addition to Spanish, they also have um, Portuguese, Creole, Arabic, uh, Vietnamese. And if you have a language that you want that you don't see on the website, please feel free to email me because as ambassadors, I do have access to some other languages that are in the process of being approved for the CDC. So they've already been translated, but they're not yet CDC approved. So I may be able to help you out uh, with another language that you're looking for. Um, the specific age checklists are really nice um, depending on what you do for work. So let's say you work in a WIC office and you know you have a lot of six month appointments coming in, you know, you can use just the six month checklist. Or let's say you work in um, a Head Start or special education preschool classroom and you have a three year old classroom you can use just the three-year-old checklist, right? You have all these parents coming in for parent meetings and you can sort of use this checklist as a communication tool, like a parent uh, progress report on the child and really engage the parent in some nice conversations. And again, um, you know, if there's a language barrier or there isn't great rapport with that family, you can always sort of put it on the CDC that, well, according to the CDC, your child should really um, check in with the pediatrician to talk about um, um, maybe why your child isn't doing this or that just yet. So these are really great tools. I do want to note that um, sometimes there's concern that there'll be an unnecessary referral. So I told them to go to see the doctors and it was for nothing. That's really not going to happen here with the developmental monitoring program. So if you're an SLP in the, in the uh, audience today, don't worry, there will be no unnecessary referrals. We know that speech and language pathologists have you know the biggest caseloads and the biggest waiting lists, and that is not going to happen. And I can tell you with confidence, because it's a monitoring tool, it's not a screening tool, it's not an evaluation tool, it's a monitoring tool. So when it says go see the doctor because your child isn't doing this specific skill, it's because that skill is really late. 
it's late. So I promise you as a clinician, as an OT, that these are well done and you can have confidence referring that family to the doctor when they are not doing one of those things because it's very delayed. And when you say, go see the doctor, you're not, you're not taking any ownership there. You're just saying, let's investigate this further. Please go get your child screened. Please go get your child looked at. You're not saying that there's a problem. You're just saying, let's investigate this further of why um, your child may not be doing that. So again, this, these um, tools, these developmental monitoring tools, they don't diagnose, right? They're not indicating a disability. They're just saying, please go, go, look, go have the skill looked at. So as a therapist, we never diagnose either, right? Like teachers don't diagnose, clinicians, OTs, PTs, SLPs, we don't, we don't diagnose. We're just saying, let's go get this child screened because this monitoring tool is saying that this child should be doing this at this age and they're not. So why is that? Okay. Um, these monitoring tools are really meant to engage. So when you find something's wrong, you know, you want to refer them to the doctor, you can also refer them right to early intervention or special education services. All right, let's look at some of the other tools. Um, the Baby's Busy Day is a very popular board book. Again, they all come in English and Spanish. Um, Baby's Busy Day, uh, we just got a grant. Uh, it's part of the webinar series. We're also having a whole bunch of these books um, shipped to the Massachusetts WIC that they'll be giving out at the six months visits, which is really exciting. But inside these books, it's all different milestones um, that the baby can be doing. So it's helping with parent engagement baby bang spoon on the tray, um, baby hugs, blows kisses, right? So think of like the hand to mouth and blowing kisses, right? This is nine months that starts to happen. So these books are really great for parent engagement, looking at things that a baby can be doing at one years of age. The two-year-old book, Where is Bear? A Terrific Tale for Two-Year-Olds, again, comes in English and Spanish. And again, this two-year-old book, it talks about different developmental milestones that a two-year-old can be doing. So this particular page is like blowing, and I know there's jumping in here. Um, when I used to work in the preschool classrooms, I would always read a book, you know, like jump, rock, jump. And then we would act out the uh, motor movements with the children. So if you have therapists coming into the room or you're planning a motor movement group, how great are these books? I highly recommend them because they, um, really make for a fun motor group. The three-year-old book, Amazing Me, um, also comes in English and Spanish. And again, all um, milestones for a three-year-old. So this one, you know, starts to talk about dressing. So these are just fun books and they're all free. So all of you can go on to the CDC website and there's an ordering page and you can request materials for yourself. And so can all of the parents that you work with, they will have um, materials that will be shipped to them. So I strongly encourage that you all check it out. Another tool on the website is the Watch Me. And this is a free continuing education program. It has four modules. When you complete all four modules, um, you can um, print out a certificate of completion. So it's a really nice online continuing ed, especially when we live in this online world right now. Um, the program is really geared for um, a classroom setting. So it teaches you really how to use the tools in, in a classroom setting. However, if you're not in a classroom setting, it still really gives you some neat pointers on how to use the tools. So I would recommend it to anyone if you're looking to learn more about the program. The CDC also has tip sheets. So they've developed tip sheets for specific areas that you may be working in. So I know that there's some home visitors here today and some Head Start and some WIC folks. So thank you all for coming. And so when you go onto the website, there's a specific tip sheet that the CDC made for home visitors. There's another specific tip sheet that was made for early Head Start and Head Start. There's another one for early care and education programs and another one for WIC. So please explore the CDC website and try to find the specific tip sheet that works for you. 
There's also some tip sheets on um, <clears throat> other subjects. The one is developmental monitoring versus screening. So here, <clears throat> excuse me, I do my, mine again in English and Spanish. And this tip sheet is really explaining the difference between monitoring and screening. So again, no one has to be an expert, right? The CDC did all the work for us. So we can always hand these out if we're not exactly sure, or we can use these to help explain to families. This one is how to talk with the doctor. So maybe a family is concerned about how to talk to the doctor. Again, you can have English on one side. I have Spanish, but you could have any language that's appropriate for where you live. There's different um, pockets in Massachusetts that have uh, different areas, uh, different languages that are more popular. This one is how to help your child. So really geared for parents, how to help your child. I have Spanish on the back of that one as well. And I really like this one, tips for talking with parents about developmental concerns. So I was on a WIC meeting um, a few weeks ago and that had been a concern for um, a bunch of WIC employees. So um, they had a guest speaker come and really talk about how to talk with parents about developmental concerns. So this is a really nice tip sheet. Um, and if, if you feel after this presentation that there's really something that you need more education on, please ask your directors about that. Um, I will be happy to come and do more information, more training for anyone. Um, it's part of my job. I do it all for free. And I just want to remind you all that the more you use the tools, the better I look. So it is in my best interest to make sure that everyone receives all of the training that they need so they feel confident and comfortable using these tools. So I learned how to do screenshots within the year, which is very exciting, um, a benefit to COVID. And uh, what I did here was I did some screenshots to show you how to navigate to find your specific tip sheets that you might be looking for. So when you first pull up the CDC website, you're going to see um, this picture here at the top. And if you scroll down, you'll see these options. If you click on early childhood educators, you'll get another set of options. And so for this specific example, I was looking for the Head Start tip sheet. And so then um, I would click on Head Start. So it does take a little bit of navigating on the website, but I strongly encourage you to spend the time because there's so much information on there. So really a lot of um, beneficial videos and materials, really check it out. So they also have posters, growth charts, buttons. Um, so the videos that they have, if you have like a TV in your waiting room, um, perhaps they have all these different um, videos that you can get on the website and they come in English and Spanish, really talking about developmental milestones and why it's important to do monitoring. Um, these posters are great, again, all free. Um, this one here that I have an example of is a growth chart where you can put different children's pictures on there. Um, there's posters for, you know, waiting rooms or hallways. And this here is an example of a button. So I also, when I became an ambassador, I learned what a button was. And um, if you have a website, you know, most websites will have a resource tab. And if you click on the resources, it'll be, you know, um, like infant mental health toolbox, right? You have all these different resources that you would like for parents to have access to. So you could have like CDC's Learn the Science Act Early program and have a link, or you could use what they call buttons. See, I'm new to this, so maybe maybe other people hadn't heard of this before. And so this down here is an example of a button. So the CDC has a list of buttons. There's, I don't know, maybe 10 or more. They come in English and Spanish. And instead of having the link, you have this cute little button. And when you click on the button, it'll then bring you to the CDC webpage. So really fun and cute. Um, I, had, I asked the Massachusetts OT Association to put a button on their page and they did. And it just looks really cute. It's a good resource. Okay, so if you haven't already, we are now going to um, go through the tracker app. So please download the CDC's Milestone Tracker app. When you download the app and you pull it up, I'm gonna run through it um, with you all. We're gonna do a case study. So we'll go slowly so everyone's on the same page. When you first pull up the tracker app, it'll ask you if you'd like 
it in English or Spanish, which is a really nice feature. So we're going to try it. And I didn't have a cell phone until my late 20s. So I sort of feel as though if I think it's easy to do, then it's easy to do. Um, so hopefully you all feel that it's easy as well. So we are going to add a child. The child that we're going to pretend that we are working with is named Maya. So you're going to add a child. And you are going to enter her name in the top. You are going to select her birth date. So her birth year is 2019. She was born in July on the 12th. So you're going to enter that in. And she is a girl. One thing while you all are setting that up, I'd like to mention is that sometimes where we work, immigration status is a concern. So if you are working with a family that you think that might be a concern, please keep in mind and, and tell them that this information isn't stored anywhere. It's not going anywhere. So they can feel really comfortable about um, providing information. There's no last name required. They can change it by a day if they want. Uh, you know, say it's July 11th instead of the 12th. Um, and when you're working with a family, if they don't say have any room on their phone, you can say if you're a classroom teacher or um, maybe you're a home visitor and the family doesn't have room on the phone, maybe you do it on your phone or you do it on the iPad, you can delete it, right? So you can show them that you're gonna put it in and you delete the child right after when you're done, just sort of help them feel more comfortable about the process if they're, if they're concerned. I know um, I sent, I work as an assistant professor at American International College and some of the OT students went into Wick Springfield and we're working with families in the waiting room. And um, I had students bring their phone, but also an iPad. And so they, I asked them to show them on an iPad uh, unless they specifically asked for the phone. And so not all families were comfortable right away, like putting it on their phone. They said most were, um, but for the families that weren't, the students were able to show the families on the iPad and then delete it afterwards. So um, maybe the first time that families are, are introduced to this, it just sort of improves the comfort level um, depending on their situation. So we always wanna be sensitive to that. Okay, so hopefully you've downloaded the app and you've put in the information for our pretend Maya. And now we are going to move forward and look at the her milestones. So when you pull up, um, once you move forward, you're gonna see this home screen. So I call this the tracker page here, okay? So this tracker page, this is like the home screen and we are gonna click on this top green button here um, and that we're going to go through the checklist. If the family has multiple children, you may see a page like this where they have all of their children entered in on one page, but we only have Maya. So we're going to go ahead and do her milestones. So each milestone is going to give you a picture or a video. So this is really nice if there is a language barrier perhaps, um, or if you're not sure or the parents aren't sure what that specific milestone is, it sort of gives you a video or a picture to help you understand what that is. There's also three choices for each milestone, which is really nice. It could be a yes, a not sure, or a not yet. So this comes into play if maybe you're the classroom teacher and you haven't seen all the skills, you could say not sure. Maybe um, the person bringing the child to you is not their primary caregiver and they're not sure whether or not they have those skills. Sometimes, especially in outpatient, it's not always um, the immediate caregiver that brings the child to therapy or maybe in um, home visiting, you know, maybe it's a, the primary daycare, like an EI. Sometimes it's not the parent, it's a daycare worker that we're doing the visit with. So sometimes we don't always have all the information and that's okay. We can hit not sure and really just fill this out the best that we can. So for this first milestone, likes to hand things to others as play, we're going to say yes. So we're going to click the yes button. And then at the top, um, top right, there's a purple next button. And we're going to hit next. And it's going to bring us to the next milestone. I hope that you're all following along. If you have any questions, Lauren is going to be uh, answering them all in the chat box. 
The next one is may have temper tantrums. So we're gonna say yes and click the next button. May be afraid of strangers. We're gonna say yes and click the next button. Shows affection to familiar people. We will say yes. Next. Plays simple pretend such as feeding a doll. You know what? We haven't seen her do pretend skills yet. So we're gonna say not yet and hit next. May cling to caregivers in new situations. We'll say yes and hit next. Points to show others something interesting. We'll say yes. Explores alone, but with parents close by, we'll say yes. Says several single words, we'll say yes. Says and shakes head no, that's usually a favorite, say yes. Points to show someone what she wants, we'll say yes. Lots of pointing at 18 months, it's a great communication tool. Knows what ordinary things are, for example, telephone, brush and spoon, we'll say yes, hit next. Points to get the attention of others, we will say yes. Shows interest in a doll or stuffed animal by pretending to feed. Here's another pretend skill. So we're going to say not yet and click next. Points to one body part. We will say yes. Scribbles on her own. We will say yes. Can follow one step verbal commands without any gestures. For example, sits when you say sit down. We will say yes. Walks alone, we will say yes. May walk up steps, we will say yes. Pulls toys while walking. Well, these toys are pretty hard to find unless you're a therapist or a preschool room, you may not have these. Um, so we'll put not sure for this one and hit next. Can help undress herself, we'll say yes. Drinks from a cup. For those of you who do feeding, notice how that's an open cup and not a sippy cup. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, we'll say yes and hit next. And eats with a spoon, we will say yes. So after you have completed all of the milestones, it's gonna take you to this yellow page. Um, remember the first time that you do the milestones, there'll be more um, than, than the next time that you go in. So what I really like about this yellow page is that you can put notes right into the um, app. So let's, I'm an EIOT, right? I don't go to the GI appointments as a feeding consultant. So I can put notes right into the parent's phone and say, you know what, how about if, can, would you mind making a note there? I'd really like for you to remember to ask the doctor, blah, 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 right? And so I can say, would you like me to type that in? Or do you want to type that right in so you remember? And they'll be like, oh, okay. And so anything that you want them to ask the doctor at their next visit, they can take notes right here on this part. So if you're a classroom teacher and you're like, you know what, I haven't heard this child say any words or I'm really concerned about the social skills. They're really on parallel play and they really should be engaging more. They should be past that. Um, so any concerns that you have, you can enter them in right here on this page. So this is a really nice option. So after you enter in any notes that you may have, um, you're going to hit the done button and then it is going to bring you to the summary. So the CDC just does a nice job here. They make it so easy for you. So this summary, this can be emailed out. So let's say um, the parent wants to email it straight to the doctor or the teacher or another therapist, right? So the parent wants for their outpatient PT to see um, what the preschool OT had to say, right? So it's just a nice interagency communication tool and it's all at the control of the parents. So who do they want to have this information? It can easily be emailed out. So it's just a really nice tool um, and they certainly make it easy. If you hit the tracker button at the very bottom, it's gonna bring you back to that home page. And I would like for you to hit the orange tab, which is the tips and activities. And it's gonna bring you to a screen that you see here on the PowerPoint. And at the top is the age, so 18 months. And here's an entire list of activities that are appropriate for an 18 month old. 
So this is so nice for parent engagement. Um, or maybe there's an older brother who doesn't know what to do with his two-year-old uh, sibling. Or maybe grandma is coming into town for a few weeks and isn't really used to playing with small children. Here are some activities. So no matter what the situation may be, there is a list of appropriate age appropriate activities for each age group. My students actually love this because it really helps them come up with ideas for their treatment planning. So at the top where it says 18 months, you can easily change that age. So if you click on that, it'll say past or future. Well, let's go ahead and say future. We, we have another child, the sibling, let's go ahead and hit future and we'll say three years of age. When we do that, it's gonna take us back to that home page, the tracker page. We hit the orange tab again, and now we have a whole list of three-year-old activities. So this is a really nice feature that we have. Um, if you hit the tracker button again, it's going to take you back to the home page. And now I want you to hit the red button, the milestone quick view tab. Why this is really nice is because it provides domain specific skills. So let's say you only have concerns in the motor area. So you can specifically click on movement and it'll give you all the age appropriate movement skills for that child. If you only have concerns in say cognitive, then you can just see the cognitive. And again, it has that tab at the top. So if you wanted to change the age, you can go up and click the age. So say instead of 18 months or three years, you want to go past or future, you click the age that you would like to see, it takes you back to that home screen tracker page, and then it um, you hit the red tab again to go to the milestone quick view and it'll give you all of the appropriate skills for that age. So play around with this. Um, it really is a nice tool and they make it easy for you um, to really narrow down what you'd like to look at. Another feature, if you look at the very bottom, is the appointments tab. So for those of you that do home visiting or WIC, EI, I'm trying to think of pretty much all of us, right? If there's another visit, a classroom teacher, um, you can put your next appointment right in the phone. So, um, you know, Kate, EI, OT, feeding, you know, next Thursday at three o'clock or next Tuesday at noon, please have your child be hungry, right? As a feeding consultant, when I come in, it's really nice if the child's hungry. So I always try to remind the parents of that, but sometimes I come and they're already eaten, which happens. But um, it would, how nice is it to sort of have that extra reminder be available? So that's another nice option um, that you have with this tracker app. So, um, just one more thing about the app, you know, think of it as like one more tool in your tool bag, right? So the app isn't for everyone, but for those people, it's going to be great. Um, I have a, a, a one patient, that a, a family that comes to mind that um, I was having difficulty engaging the mom and, I, you know, switching it up a little bit, trying to really get that rapport. And when I introduced the app, it was like, you know, she sort of lit up and was really into it. And she um, is generally, generally pretty flat affected. And so I was like, oh my goodness, who would have thought the app is the great tool, you know? And so I always have to check my own biases because I'm not a technology lover that other people are. Um, but, you know, really think of it as just like one more tool, right? Like one more tool in your tool chest that you can always pull out and hopefully it'll be successful for you. I have found that families really like the app. And, you know, you can always give families, you know, pieces of paper that they sometimes put in that folder that they have that goes on the hutch and then it stays there till you come the next time. But they always have their phone with them, right? So that's what's really great about this app is that families usually always have their phone. Um, Monitoring is a team approach, and I really just want to emphasize how important it is that we all take part in this monitoring. So there's over a hundred of you here. Thank you, right? You care about the children that you work with. You all work with children and that's why you're here. So how nice is it if we can all be using the same language, using the same monitoring tool, making the refer referrals to um, our different agencies to really build that collaboration to improve the children outcomes. When you're making the referral, um, I just want to remind you that it's really important to always refer to the pediatrician 
However, you can also make referrals to family ties, early intervention, and special education programs directly. Family Ties is the most amazing program. It is specific to Massachusetts. And if you haven't heard of it, then this is gonna be the best thing that you learned today for sure. Um, family Ties of Massachusetts will, um, it's a parent advocacy group. And when a family calls, they will tell the family exactly where to call for an early intervention evaluation. So this is a really great tool. If you don't know this number or this website, please take it down. You'll be so thrilled you did. As a therapist, it's also really difficult to find respite services and Family Ties has a list of respite services. It also has a ton of resources available. So I was on recently and um, you know you just sort of click what you're looking for. So asthma and it will bring up all these asthma resources or autism spectrum disorder and you click on it and it'll give you all across the state, all of these different resources with um, contact information. So um, I was also looking for SIBHOPS, which is an amazing program that I used to um, have in Virginia. And I was looking to see it was, if it was here in Massachusetts. I go on Family Ties. Sure enough, you know, under siblings is SIBHOPS. So it's like a support group for siblings. And they also had um, sibling bereavement groups and a whole bunch of other sibling supports um, all across the state. So if you're not familiar with the website or the organization, um, Family Ties is a really wonderful um, resource. So we as you know working with children it's really important that we understand how important that we are that we empower families you know parents will come to us and caregivers and they'll be like i know something's wrong and you know when a parent has concerns it's our job to say you know you're doing the right thing you know that child better than anyone and we really want to encourage you to keep advocating for your child right um we want to make sure that that it's we're, we're hearing what they're saying, right? Um, we hear what you're saying and we really, we just wanna support you in your continued efforts to advocate for your child. So please remember how important you are um, in really helping them make that referral to EI, Family Ties, or to the pediatrician um, to really get the services for their child that they need. Because when the parents have a concern, most of the time they're correct. Okay. What we're going to do now is we are going to break up for um, about 10 minutes. I'm going to put you all into breakout rooms. When I um, put you into the breakout rooms on the screen, it will have an invitation for you to go to a specific room. Once you're inside the room, whoever's name starts, the first name starts closest to A, we'll do alphabetized, goes first. So I want you to say, hi, I'm Kate. I'm an OT. I work for... Foam Springfield, and I want you to say whether you use the tools, whether you don't use the tools, what you like. If you have any questions, now is the time. Um, Lauren and myself, we're going to be popping in between the rooms to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, so you know, a lot of us don't know what the other person does. You know, what exactly is the role of Head Start and WIC? And, and this is a nice chance for that interagency collaboration. So I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms and you can all pop in to the different rooms. And I'm just gonna kick you out after 10 minutes. So you're just gonna get like a kick out and it's gonna send you back to the main room. Hi everyone, hopefully you found uh, the breakout rooms beneficial to get a chance to talk um, with your peers um, and get an, a good understanding of um, what each other does. Um, just some takeaways in our last couple of minutes. Um, you know, sometimes people really listen when you talk money. So $1 spent in preschool saves $8 later in special education. So really, how important is it the work that we do? It's really important and it saves money. Um, another key takeaway for today is that a doctor's referral is not required for a child to be evaluated for early intervention and for special education. And for children with developmental delays, the earlier they receive services, the less services they need. Um, 
how to stay current. Um, here are some um, sites that you can look at. The uh, CDC has a Milestones Matter Facebook page. They do a really great job. I recommend following them. Um, the Massachusetts Act Early also has a Facebook page. We don't post that often. When we do, though, it's usually about free trainings coming up. Um, and we also, Mass Act Early has a website, and on the website is a, a variety of free trainings that are available to you all. So I recommend that you check it out. Um, as part of this grant, the Massachusetts Act Early team also put on a fall conference, and there was four different webinars. Three of them were really focused on children with autism, and uh, the fourth was really on parents and resiliency. And so I, I recommend you all check out those free webinars um, that are online as well. So thank you so much for everyone for coming. I hope you found this valuable. Um, again, this series was funded from the AUCD and the CDC. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I am gonna stay on afterwards and I will stay until all the questions are answered. Um, so if you have something that you'd like to ask me, please stay on. And thank you again, everyone for coming. I really appreciate the dedication uh, to the children.